Now coming to the type of the materials of the nucleators. The types of the insulator material, one, one normal material which everybody knows almost is called the porcelain. Second, which is used is called as the toughened glass. Now, one more. General electrical have uh, discovered it is called as Gipol. The general electrical company has discovered it. G E is for that, and P O L is for the polymer. It is named as Gipol, which is better than these two. And so, since I said that these are better than these two, so we should actually understand. Uh, we should know the properties of the insulator material. What are the properties of insulator material? The insulator material should be <coughs> have should have the high puncture strength. Second, very much good property of this is that it should have higher or greater mechanical strength. The third very important property is the, the thermal shock resistance should be high. So the important property is high thermal shock resistance. <clears throat> so these are the properties of the Insulator material that the puncture strength should be high, the mechanical strength should, it should have higher thermal shock resistance, it should have the uh, material which is actually being used in, in, as a uh, insulator, it should be uh, free from impurities. So that is also one of the important uh, properties about the insulator material. <coughs> now coming to very important thing in this chapter which is called the voltage distribution and the strain efficiency. <coughs> Suppose This is a insulator, a string type insulator, and uh, conductor which is going into the board right now, like this, is connected to this string. So, what happens? When a conductor um, carries a voltage, so there is a difference in voltage in the strain, and the voltage distribution among the total strain is not equal because of the capacitance of the, uh, uh, the material. So, of the string actually. So, the strain which is 
or the disc which is near to the conductor is highly stressed approximately almost equal to its flashover voltage and if a flashover is happening in this the flashover whole string will be having the flashover we will have to see the flashover and this string which is the this this which is the farthest from the conductor so it is less or not stressed this is not at all stressed because of the voltage distribution so the voltage is maximum over here but then minimum then minimum then minimum then 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 when it is lowest here so the voltage actually increases like this in a string uh, uh, in a suspension type of oscillator so we need to have the voltage distribution first of all such that the voltage distribution should be equal among all the this uh, so that not only one disc is highly stressed all the discs carry the same load and if the load if the load of the voltage distribution the stress is uh, is distributed among this whole strain then the voltage then the, there will not be any fault condition in the total strain so we should have a voltage distribution in this string. So since we have seen that the, the total string is highly stressed and the string uh, the, uh, the conductor or the disc which is nearer to the conductor current to current it is highly stressed and this is the have the least stress. So we should be having a figure of merit kind of thing or called a strain efficiency. <coughs> So the string efficiency is n is equal to n into V1 upon V. So here the voltage V, I can say voltage nearer to the, I can say the total voltage, this is the word and Vt upon V1 suppose. So the string efficiency is defined as the n into Vt upon V1, where n is the total number of discs in this, Vt is the total voltage across the string and V1 is the voltage across the highly stressed conductor, highly stressed disc actually. This also can be written as n into And into the flashover voltage of the total string and into flashover voltage of total string divided by the flashover voltage of the this nearer to conductor. It means this again, this we are talking about this conductor which is the nearest to the uh, uh, this uh, this actually which is nearest to the conductor right now. So <coughs> these are the two very much important formula one is the, for the string efficiency over here and for here. So we must learn these learn behind these formulas so that one should be able to solve some numerical problem on this. So now coming to one more important point in the, this string efficiency. The string efficiency clearly is that the string efficiency is is decreased at the number of unit increases. <coughs> Sorry, this is this n is coming here and into V1 Vt upon and here it is n into 
flash over. So we can say that the string efficiency uh, decreases as the number of this increases. So V on and V one or and V. So this was the string efficiency, but we have till now we have not talked about the uh, improvement in the voltage distribution. So how to increase the voltage distribution? Or we can say how to improve the voltage distribution. First way is a very normal way of increasing the voltage distribution is by uh, using the longer cross arm. First is by second is by capacitance grading. And third is used by the guard rings. These three things which are actually done to improve the voltage distribution. <coughs> so, in the lower class arm, the capacitance from the line and the ground unit of the string is actually increased potential distribution due to stray capacitances from the line and ground to each of the string is increased so the law, by using the longer cross arm we have a improvement in voltage distribution so here also uh, if the capacitance of the whole string is adjusted in a reverse order so that the capacitance of the whole string is almost same so the voltage uh, distribution is also same in that so we can have a voltage distribution better in case of uh, capacitance grading also third is use of guard rings is are actually placed in, in below the uh, conductor uh, below the insulator such that the it increases the uh, line to line capacitance and it decreases the line to line uh, sorry uh, it decreases the stray capacitance from line to earth so the important thing is when you guard rings it increases line to line capacitance and decreases line to earth capacitance Oh, this is very important point regarding the guardrails. Please remember this thing. It is a stays capacitance to the arc to, due to making a voltage redistribution really form. <coughs> so, uh, one more thing which comes into the uh, conductors or the line insulator is called the vibration of the conductor so vibration of this can be uh, due to ice vibration can be due to air vibration due to cell vibration also so there are different type of vibrations happening in the line insulators one is called the um, galloping which is due to ice and another is called dancing on steel jump uh, which is actually uh, due to when the um, ice is falling from the conductor uh, then uh, there is a very less frequency in the conductor and that is of approximately of 1 to 1, 1.25 hertz so that is a very uh, low frequency uh, so on which the conductor actually dances and so we need to have the uh, 
conductors uh, not developing, not dancing because of the reason that the effect of vibrations are very much um, severe sometimes that if the vibrations are there sometimes it may touch the another uh, conductor uh, and there is a flash in, be in between there is a uh, line to line uh, fault in between and uh, due to dancing and uh, the conductor may break uh, so that is also not desirable <coughs> apart from that excessive of sand will be there uh, due to the dancing so these are the things which are not desirable in the in case of vibration of the conductor so we need to do something to prevent the vibration of the conductor such that one is called the armor rod another is called the stop bridge dampers <coughs> so we can have that now prevention of vibration of conductor Prevention of vibration of conductor is one by the armor rods, as we said. And second by stock pitch dampers. Armor rods. Armor rods are such that they are placed. So if this is the line I am having, so rods are actually holding this and above the insulator such that the if this is the line which is going and if I am holding it like this from some uh, insulator, so that if there is less chances of dancing and less chances of vibration in this conductor, so. This is one way which is called by doing it by armor rods. So armor rods are placed on uh, the, the uh, actually on the uh, conductor itself. Whereas uh, there is one more thing which is called the stock bridge dampers. Or suppose this is my conductor going, so I can have one very heavy metal rod connected over here such that the weight of this metal is very much high and it is very heavy so this will be actually what doing what if I am handling some load from my conductor so there is a less chance of dancing this dancing of this conductor and there is a prevention in the vibration so these two methods are normally used for Prevention of vibration of the conductor, which is called one is called the armor rod, and this is called the stop bridge dampers.